Hey fans and subscribers, this is your host Joe with a video on what settings you can tweak to maximize your battery when playing Jedi Survivor. To do that, we are going to be using two programs. The first program is Universal x86 Tuning Utility, and the other program is Armory Crate. Let's first start with the Tuning Utility. The Universal x86 Tuning Utility has a specific mode that we are going to look at. So first, let's transition to the pre-made presets. We want to select the ECO, ECO preset. And this preset is designed to prioritize energy efficiency over performance. And there is a short description here for that. Next, we want to transition to adaptive. Now, if you are using this for the first time, this drop-down menu is not going to be available for you. However, if you press the, it looks like a synchronize button here, your games that are installed are going to show here. And since we are focusing on Jedi Survivor today, I have this one selected. So let's first look at the basic adaptive mode settings. Now, in this part of the utility, we are not able to set our CPU component of the APU, specifically the minimum and maximum clock speed that we want. So an approach to doing that is to create throttling, and specifically to create throttling with maintaining a certain temperature. And in the testing that I've done, I have found that 65 degrees Celsius is a good temperature to set. And I have found that the CPU component of the APU can reach its base clock of 3.3 gigahertz. We are working with the Z1 Extreme, but it is not high enough. The temperature is not high enough that it is going to go over that or stay at that point for a long period of time which can work against us trying to preserve the battery. Now in this case, with our max power here, our TDP limit, I am setting this to 20. I have tested 15, 18, 22, and I have found that 20 is a good TDP limit to set for this game. I'm going to scroll down here, and we're going to look at our Turbo Boost Overdrive. And we're going to look at our, our iGPU clock limit here, our maximum and minimum, and also our minimum CPU clock limit below. Now, the GPU component of the APU, I am aligning these speeds with actually the minimum of the AMD APU Ryzen 7 7840U. And one of the sources the channel uncovered is that the minimum clock speed, base clock speed, is 1.2 gigahertz. And I have found that to be reasonable as what to maintain here, at least for this game. So in this case, the minimum I'm setting is the very lowest of the base clock, and that's 1200 megahertz here. And then I am setting 1250 for the maximum. So I want to maintain the lowest part of that base clock. And the minimum CPU clock limit here, this setting I'm not finding as very significant for the purposes of preserving battery. So I have just left that here at 1250. Now, Armory Crate and Universal x86 Tuning Utility, they, I have found, don't play nice. And rather, it's Armory Crate that doesn't play nice with this. So the approach that I have taken, at least, to mitigate them not playing nice with one another is to create a custom profile to align with the profile that I have set within Adaptive. And to do that, I have just created a 20-watt profile here. And I have set the SPL, the SPPT, and the FPPT all to be 20. And I, this one actually wanted to move on me. So one of the bugs that I'm finding with Armory Crate. So with that said, good to check on this every now and then because they can move on you. 
Now, I have set my fan curves to just be the default three in this case. And again, if you recall from looking at the tuning utility, we are just going to be maintaining the 65 degrees Celsius. Now, with Armory Crate, what you want to do, let me switch back to that very quickly here. What you want to make sure in setting this profile is that you have it set within your profile for the game. So in this case, we have Jedi Survivor here. We go to Game Profile. We move down to Configuration. And as you can see, now, of course, in this case, we're trying to preserve battery and not be connected to a power source. So for the operating mode DC, I'm going to have this set at 20 and apply that. Now, before you get started, let, let me move back here to the tuning utility. When you set this, if you follow the settings that I have provided or your own, you do want to make sure that you can you select save down here. So if you move any of this around, do make sure that you select save. And then you want to start adaptive mode. Without selecting this option, when you run the game, you will see that these settings are not applied. So do make sure that you select the start adaptive mode and you can stop it if you need to do that. So with that, what I'm going to do now is transition into showing you what these settings look like in playing the game. And I will give you full transparency here. I have found that I have been able to maintain mid-20s for frame rate and in a frequent amount of cases, the lower 30s as well. And I have found that this works well as it's playable however during cinematic scenes where there is high combat i have found that the frame rates drop into the upper teens i'm willing to compromise there but perhaps in tweaking these settings even more we can prevent that from happening especially with our temperature limit here for the cpu i have found that changing the clock speeds here does not help with those scenes. But you can let me know in the comments what you find out in looking at this even more. So with that, I'm going to transition to showing you some gameplay. And before we get started, I'd like to review the graphics settings that I have set for this session with the settings applied before that I showed you. I have the resolution set at 1280 by 720. The Windows mode is full screen. I have a custom profile set for all low settings, extending from view distance to texture quality and foliage detail. I have VSync as on, and I have the display set at 60 hertz, which is available to do through Armory Crate. I can select the overlay Armory button, and I can then select refresh rate, and I can change that right here to 60 hertz if I would like to do that. And I have ray tracing enabled and I have my AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution set at two. And with that, let's jump into some gameplay. All right, I am sitting here with my ROG Ally and I have Jedi Survivor pulled up. And I have made sure that the X86 tuning utility has the adaptive mode enabled so that it applies to the Jedi Survivor session that I have going here. And I also have made sure that my Armory Crate operating mode profile is set at manual and it is showing 20 watt here for the aligned profile with that TDP limit set. Looking at our stats right now, we see that our CPU is sitting between 3.3, 3.4 gigahertz. Our GPU clock likes to jump from 1160 megahertz to 1210 megahertz right now. Our APU watt is sitting at 20 watt as expected. Our sitting frame rate here, and this is going to be part of the baseline for us, is sitting at 36, though our baseline is going to be mid 20 frame rate to low 30 frame rate and our temperature is sitting at 56 degrees right now which makes sense because we are trying to stay 
under 65 degrees and our battery is at 70 percent so let's get started here And this is an opportunity for Animal you to see gameplay with the last settings the applied the that we have seen and reviewed TV. in this video. I think we just found our ticket out of here. Our CPU clock is sitting at 3.4 gigahertz right now. And we're still seeing that GPU clock jump from 1160 to 1210. We're seeing a baseline range for four frame rates, upper 20s, low 30s. Let's take this to Domas. Then we can clear that gate with a little boost from our new friend. your way around Kobo, don't you? All right, and that is some gameplay of Jedi Survivor with these settings applied. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope this video leads you to further tuning and tweaking on your settings with this game to further enjoy Jedi Survivor and maximize your battery life. And with that, let me leave you now with the words of Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. I should go.